I made the glowing swamp base for a witch. Wow! So during the weekend, I painted some minis with the maid. She picked the mouse knight and the witch for us to paint. The thingy vest links are in the description if you want the files for yourself. It was really fun to let loose while painting, and it was really interesting to experiment with water effects. It took way too long while painting the mouse knight, so we didn't get to paint the witch. Speaking of the witch, I was inspired to make a swampy base for it, since the mini doesn't come with one. And I wanted the witch to levitate off the base naturally. Instead of using a stick up its butt, which would have been an eyesore, so the plan is to have her toes contact the water as she flies across the swamp. I would like to incorporate branches and logs to the bill to give it an earthly feel. So I went to the park and got an assortment of twigs. Give them a wash to remove all the dirt and bacteria, bake it under the sun to remove all the moisture. I place it in a box crate so that it wouldn't get blown away by the wind. Since it's a diorama, I'm gonna need a base for all the elements to be built upon. So I printed bases in different sizes that would give me plenty of options to choose from. I remove all the support material from the witch, making sure all the support marks are scraped off. Unfortunately, one of the support structures was attached to the eye, and I didn't see that while slicing the mini, due to the hat supports being in the way. Due to that, I'm not gonna paint the eyes. Then I give the mini an iso bath in the ultrasonic cleaner and a brush to remove all the resin particles. I went with the large base since it suited the mini and the bill I'm going for. I had to clean the base with a hobby knife to remove excess material. I also filed and gave it a polish. Initially I was going to use a paper clip to pin the witch to the base, but there was no good way to hide the attachment point, but luckily I had some leftover clear support material from a previous 3D print. Using clear resin provides plenty of pinning options because it will blend into the base when I incorporate water effects. To attach the pin, I make a pilot hole with a hobby knife, then using my smallest drill bit with a pin vise, I slowly drill the hole. Do not apply heavy pressure because that will crack the resin. And a little dab of super glue to secure the pin. Position the mini on the base, feel free to take your time to place it where you want it. Once you're happy with the position, mark out the hole with a the marker. Then using the same drill bit with the pin vise, drill out the hole on the base. Snip off the pin so that it fits closer to the base, but leave some extra material just in case. Then dry fit the mini onto the base. Once I got the mini in the right orientation, I marked it out as a reminder. Now to do some landscaping. I dry fit the twigs in a variety of ways to get an idea for how I would like my swamp to look. Once I had a rough idea of what I want, I move on to add volume. I use a cork sheet for this. First, I mark out the base shape, then I cut it out and glue it to the base. Then I use a mole line remover to shape the cork into something that resembles a swampy shoreline. I decided to use smaller twigs because it suited the base size. I wanted to have a branch floating in the swamp, so I sanded a flat face for the twig so that I can secure it to the base with super glue. Finally, I sanded it flush to the base. I wanted the aesthetic of the base to have no overhangs and all the elements to be contained within the base. I also wanted to have a log on the shoreline, so I used a bigger twig for this. I used paper clips to attach it to the base. The process for doing so is very similar to pinning the witch. I use my smallest drill bit with a pin vise to drill two holes into the twig, then I glue it down with super glue. I stick it into the cork as a guide, then I drill into the base. I snip off the excess material and glue it down. Lastly, I sanded it flush to the base. I add super glue to the cork, which acts as a sealant. This allows me to file and polish the rim for a cleaner finish. I position the twigs opposite to each other to create a line of action. By doing so, it provides some narrative. In this case, it's drawing the audience's attention in the arrow's direction, portraying the direction of travel. I add mud texture to the ground elements to give it a natural look. Once the bill is done, 
I use pre-shading to prime the base. The reason for priming it this way is to provide a natural gradient for the base coat. I was a little messy with the highlights, so I went back with a black to clean it up. I'm making sure that most of the water effects are black to simulate depth. I would like the swamp to glow green, so I added green as the first base color to build up towards fluoro green. When I added fluoro green, I made the layer too heavy, but it kinda works. <coughs> Once the fluoro green dried, the guide arrows I drew at the beginning of the project is now visible through the paint. So to fix it, I went over the saturated green and fluoro again. <coughs> well, that didn't work. Next time, I should erase all my guide arrows before I start painting. As a band-aid solution, I just painted over the arrow with a saturated green. I think it can represent the deep end of the swamp, or the shadow being casted by the witch. But I'm just making excuses for my screw up. I paint all the base elements. Brown for the mud, darker brown for the branch in the water, and another brown tone for the log. Then I give it a dry brush as the first highlight tone. As I was dry brushing, I noticed the color palette was a little muted, so I added a fair brown to the branch and log to give it a little variation. I give all the dark brown elements a black wash to shade in the details, and I give all the light brown elements a brown wash to bring out the shadows. I dry brush a variety of light tones to pick out terrain features in the mud and wood elements. Since there are a lot of browns, I want to add some flora to make things pop. I decided to use some purple foliage as moss. I transferred the basing material over into a reusable container, because it would make it easier to work with. I then apply PVA glue onto the places where I would like the moss to be, primarily over the wood elements. I recommend using a silicone brush for this. Then dust off the excess back into the container. I add some tufts to provide visual variation and contrast in the base. I place a big patch close to the water and two small patches across the log. Now to paint the witch. The color scheme I'm going for is inspired by Little Witch Academia. So I gave the dress a purple base coat, and I used Elphic Flesh for the skin tone. I am mentioning this color by name, because it has very little pigmentation, so I had a pretty hard time using it. I did two thin coats, once dried the brush strokes were still visible, so I decided to salvage it with an airbrush, but that didn't do much, and now the base coat is a little too thick for my liking. After I placed a few different colors onto the mini, I noticed that I didn't do a great cleanup job, so I used a hobby knife to clean it up. Then I gave it an isobar from the ultrasonic cleaner to remove the paint. <coughs> the ultrasonic cleaner removed the pin, so I had to redo the pinning. A toothpick comes in handy while applying the super glue. So I primed it with a Xanato highlight again, but this time I primed all the skin elements white. Hopefully this will help while painting the skin. I had to apply two coats of Elphic Flesh to give it proper coverage, plus I used an airbrush to negate the brush strokes. Then I applied purple to the dress. I mixed a pink and a red to get the desired shade, and I paint in the details. Brown for the broom stuff and the hair, and a lighter brown for the broom head. For shading, I apply flesh wash to the skin, red wash for the pink elements, purple wash for the dress, brown wash for the broom head, black wash for the broom stuff and hair. I dry brush elfic flesh onto the witch. The result was really messy and I wish I had a smaller dry brush. So I had to clean up all the oil spill from the dry brush. Dry brush the broom head, dry brush the broom stuff and hair, dry brush the skin, and this time I used a regular brush, which gave me the much needed accuracy. Lastly, a purple dry brush for the dress. Before I glue it to the base, I clean the pin with ISO, so that it stays clear when I glue it to the base. As I was gluing it to the base, I broke the pin. Fortunately, it was salvageable. Then I paint the rim of the base black, including the branch and the log to simulate a cross section. 
Now to apply water effects. I use clear tape to build a barrier for the resin, then I apply still water onto the base, using a dropper to reposition it so it doesn't pull too much in areas. Lastly, I apply a green wash to add water movement. I forgot to film this, but remember to cover the water effects as it dries, so no unwanted dust gets into the resin. Once the resin is cured, remove the tape and clean it up. Finally, brush on some water texture to create a ripple effect. For my first attempt at trying a bunch of different painting techniques, I think I did pretty good. But damn, there were many setbacks. Thank you for watching the video and see you in the next one.